Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a quick and easy Christmas card featuring the adorable new stamp set by Debbie Corbari called Fleece Nave Ba. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do this project. First, you're going to need some stamps, and here is this adorable stamp set. This stamp set is full of all these cute little sheep stamps, all dressed up for the holidays, and then all of these sheep-inspired greetings, such as Bah Humbug, Thank You, Merry Christmas to You, Fleece Nave Ba. This is so cute. What I'm going to do with these greetings is I'm going to use the Merry Christmas, and then I'm going to add the To You, and what I've done is placed both of them on the block so it can all be stamped at once. And with the clear stamps, it's pretty easy to do that because you can see through them and you can make sure that they're perfectly straight so you can combine greetings to make one bigger greeting, which is what I'm going to do for this project. The two sheep that I'm going to use are this little guy with the uh, holiday lights in his antlers and then this little sheep with this cute little Santa hat on. Okay, then you're going to need some twine, and I'm using some Baker's Twine. This is the We Are Memories brand, and I'm using the black and white. I also have one of our red hot buttons. For ink, I'm going to be using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm going to be using some Copic markers for this. Now, feel free to use other markers for this. You can use Bic markers or Memento markers, any water-based markers. Or if you like to color with colored pencils or watercolor paints, that's fine too. The Copic colors I'm going to use are R27, which is the cadmium red. I'm going to use a colorless blender pen. That's just for touch-ups if I need it. Pinkish white, which is R00. Actually, I'm not going to use these two right now. I'm going to use BG10, forget pinkish white, BG10, cool shadow, E40, brick white, and I'm going to use a Sakura Stardust pen to add a little bit of glitter. So just four Copics for this project. Then I'm going to use some scissors to cut my twine. And to apply my button, I'm going to be using some of these mini glue dots. Now these either come on the sheet like this, or they come in a roll, and both are really great. So whichever kind you have will work great. Then I've got some cardstock here. I have some of the Gina K Designs Red Hot cardstock, some of our black onyx, and some of our layering weight white. I also have a Gina K Designs pattern paper piece here, and this is from the Berries and Vines paper pack. I also need a little bit of adhesive and I am ready to begin. So we're going to start with a smaller piece of layering weight cardstock. And although our layering weight will bleed through when you're using alcohol markers, that's just fine because this panel is going to be layered onto some of the black and then that's going to go onto the card base. So I'm going to start with the sheep that has the little antlers covered with Christmas lights. And I'm going to stamp this one right about here, like that. Then I'm going to grab the one with the Santa hat on. He's going to be jumping up just a little bit higher, right about here. And that will give me room to put my greeting right down here. So let me ink that up for you. a little bit more ink to that, and that's going to go right about here. There we go. Now I've left this area blank up here because I'm going to put my button embellishment there. But before I do that, I'm going to color in these images. Now I'm choosing to go with all kind of one color theme. You can do multiple colors on this if you want. You can do red and green or other holiday colors. But I'm going to stick with all red for the Christmas lights and for the Santa hat. And then I'll show you how I'm going to color the little legs here. Let's get those colored first. We'll color this Christmas hat. And you can see that I'm not doing a whole lot of shading, I just want nice solid color. And what I like about the Copics is, even if you're not a blending artist, you can get nice, smooth, non-streaky color with Copic markers, and the colors are so nice and bright. If you didn't get a chance to go on to stamptv.com, check it out. 
You have to make sure you're a member and membership is free over there so all you have to do is sign up and make sure you're signed in and you'll see a tab up at the top that says freebies. If you go to that freebies tab and click on the tab just a couple items down you'll find a color chart that has all of the Gina K Designs cardstock colors and a spot for the ink and then all of the matching Copic colors and you can create your own color chart from your Gina K Designs items and including the different Copic markers so if you want to grab one of those that's kind of a useful tool and it's free just download it and print it and fill it in now you can see I'm coloring the little section here on their legs I want to make that look like these little sheep have leg warmers on this is the cutest little set. This is just fun too if you want to make cards for teachers or you're making little cards for your kids to give out in the classroom. This is just cute and fun and I'll give everybody that you send a card to a little chuckle. Okay so now I'm going to use the, the E40 which is brick white and I'm going to color in part of the sheep. Now sheep generally aren't snow white. They Sometimes they're a little bit dirty looking, so I want to give a little bit of depth and dimension here to these sheep using this brick white, which is actually a very good match to our ivory cardstock. I'm going to color in the tail, and then I'm just going to outline the inside of the face like that. You can see it just gives it a little bit more color, even though it's, a, it's an animal that's white you still get a little bit of shading in there. So all I'm doing is just kind of following along that outside rim, coloring in the face a little bit. And then if you want, you can color in the ears. If you want to color the feet, you can. I colored the tail. So I'm just going to leave the feet white. So there is that part. Now, I'm going to use the BG10. This is the cool shadow. I love this marker because this marker kind of makes everything glow and it makes the images kind of pop off of the, the paper a little bit. All I'm doing is outlining the entire sheep. And you can see that starts to glow. It creates just a, a glow around the outside and makes it, separates it a little bit from the background paper. Gives it a watercolory look. Now you can either do this first before you add the color or you can do it after. Just be careful that you don't touch too much of the red because it can pull the red off. And down into that blue color, you can see that there. I'm going to do the same thing with this other one. Just some nice big strokes around the outside. is so fun to do. It really kind of makes you look like more like an artist even if you're like me and just use Copics for fun. Now I'm also going to outline the letters here and make them glow a little bit. I'm just going underneath and then I'm going to fill in that a little bit. Go underneath. And then down here. Okay. So that kind of makes the whole thing glow. Now I didn't need any of the colorless blender. I was just worried if I went outside the lines with the red, you can kind of clean that up because this makes Copic marker disappear. So if you go outside the lines, you can use a colorless blender, but I didn't need it. So, okay. So for my next step, I'm going to take this Sakura Stardust pen and I always like to start it a little bit on a scrap piece of paper to make sure that the glitter is flowing out. You can see I did a couple little spots there. What I'm going to do is color in, using all this glitter, the little fluffy stuff on the hat and on the end of the hat here. That'll add a little bit of sparkle. And I'm going to do the bottom part of the feet so the feet shimmer. I'll do that here. 
Now sometimes you don't really have an area to color in, but you want to add just a little glitter. So I'm going to just draw a thin line of glitter along the antlers here. Just kind of along the stick parts. And that gives it a little shimmer up there. And then for the greeting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add dots. I'm going to add little dots of glitter right on top of each of the letters. Anywhere there's a little point like that. Let's see if you can see those going across there. See those shimmering a little bit. And then I'm going to do them underneath the letters too. Just wherever the letters end. I'll put one on the C there. I'll put one down here. And this just helps your greeting glitter a little bit. And it looks really cute with a whimsical font like this one. Just to add that little touch of sparkle in the form of a kind of a glitter dot. And I'm going to go around the C here like that. And then just touch all the points. If it doesn't have a point, like the O's don't have points, just do a dot on top and a dot underneath. And that just makes your whole greeting all sparkly. Let's see if you can see that now. All that sparkle in there and shimmer. You can see that better. Okay. So now the next step is to create a little button embellishment. And the way I'm going to do that, I'll let that glitter dry. I'm going to take this red hot button and I'm going to grab some of this black baker's twine. Cut a piece using my Cutter B scissors. And I'm going to come in from the front through one hole and do the same thing on the opposite hole. Now I have that part of the button threaded. Now I'm going to come through the opposite holes to bring the thread back to the top. Now of course if you just have a two hole button you can just do the back to the front like that part. And Then I'm going to tie a little knot and make a little loopy bow. And just cut off the excess like that. And that's going to make a cute little button embellishment up at the top of my focal image pattern, focal image piece here. So let's assemble the rest of the card first while that glitter is still drying. I'm going to apply this piece of pattern paper onto a black panel. And you know I like to use black or dark chocolate brown a lot because I love the way the bright colors look and having that little thin frame of a dark color really makes everything look so nice and crisp. Okay, so there's my first panel. Now I'm going to grab this red hot card base and attach those two together. I like having that smaller panel in the center and then the larger border going around the outside. Now for the inside of this card, if you wanted to, you could just stamp a little sheep in black or you could put another white panel in there and stamp something something on that with a greeting. It's whatever, however you want to decorate it. Some of you like to write with a glitter pen or a white gel pen and then you can use a deeper, richer color. But if you want to use a black pen or a blue pen, you can put a white panel inside. So now I'm going to take that focal image piece and get some adhesive on the back of that and that is going to be mounted onto another black onyx panel like that and then this whole piece will go on top of my card base and you'll really like that Sakura Stardust pen because it dries so quickly 
that you can color in all your focal image pieces and by the time you're done the last one your cards will be ready to start assembling. So we'll put that right about there. Make sure we have even spacing. Looks good. And then we're going to attach that button up into this corner. So I'm going to use a couple of glue dots. I'm going to use one at the top and one at the bottom. This way the button won't rock back and forth. It'll be attached in two areas. So I'll put one here at the top and then one at the bottom. You can also use three if you want. If it is a much bigger button, you might want to use three. Kind of stagger them in a triangle. And then this button will go right up here in the corner as a cute little embellishment for my card. And there is my finished card project. Try making this card with red and green cardstock and pattern paper for a more traditional look, or use non-Christmas colors and use the thank you greeting for a warm winter thank you card.